How does Shazam 2 put it? It's all about family! Family! <laughs> Guys, that was a signal! Uh, Fast next. Look, I should give my take on what I thought of the other Fast and Furious movies. First one's Point Break, but with cars. That's fine. There's nothing amazing about it. I actually never saw two or three. I've heard they're not the best. Four I do remember seeing in theaters, and it was also fine. <laughs> like, oh, this is fun. I had a good time. Um, then five, I didn't see six. I didn't see either. Was it six? I didn't see. Yeah, it was six. I didn't see either. <laughs> I didn't see six either. But then I saw seven. I saw eight. And I saw nine. And I liked. And I actually had the one with Jason Sable, which I believe was seven. That was Paul Walker's last one. Uh, I liked seven quite a bit. Uh, seven, I had a good time with. Um, um, yeah, very, very much. So. I'm, I'm, Partly because I'm just a big Jason Statham fan, too. And I think he actually made a pretty good villain. Um, eight was fun. Uh, you know, that's when they team up now. Everyone. Uh, nine. Did not love it. Um, y yeah, I think it's the best way to put it. Did not love it. In fact, it was not, there were some action sequences. Like, the stuff with the magnet I thought was cool. Um, there, there's some action stuff that was fine, but for the most part, just, eh. and I've actually really enjoyed Hobbs and Shaw. So I was going in this movie with, <laughs> with not a lot of expectations. These films have gotten ridiculous. So what I was hoping for was a dumb, ridiculous movie that I could enjoy. And what did I get? A dumb, ridiculous movie that I enjoyed. I had a good time with the movie. Is it Shakespeare? Hell no. Is it going to be winning any awards? Hell no. Is it going to be making its money back? Because allegedly it's made up about $340 million. We'll see. Um, with allegedly $100 million in marketing, $440, film has to hit $660 to break even. Allegedly. So, yeah. Um, but look, is it is it kind of what a lot of the fans have come to like about the film series as well? Yeah. <laughs> there You get the dumb, fun stunts. The action sequences are, are great. The car chases are great. The uh, the, the hand, hand fighting is really good. You get the family. Uh, you know, you get you get the family aspect of it. You get um, you know, get the characters working off of each other. Um, you get a fun villain with Jason Momoa. You get you get pretty much what you're paying for. Um, and I wasn't really hoping for much. Uh, so I got what I was looking for. I really did. Uh, I could end a review right there, and that'd be pretty much it. But let's let's just go and I'll, I'll try to keep this short, like under ten minutes if I can. Uh, the movie is it's what you see in the trailer is what you get. Apparently, I believe it was the fifth film. Um, you get the son of the villain of the fifth film, which is Jason Momoa, who was back for revenge against Dom, and apparently has been following Dom this whole time. And there's a bit where he Dom goes into a room and he's got like recordings of Dom and. I can't help but wonder, like, how I gave even following him and watching him for a while, but where the hell did you get some of these sound bites? This doesn't add up. Um, so there, there, there was a little bit of mixed uh, suspension disbelief there. And as, essentially, the agency that they've been helping out, in essence, working for, um, you know, turns against them. There's a new guy in charge. I believe it's the guy who played Reacher in the Reacher series. Um, Brie Larson gets introduced in this film, obviously Jason Momoa, uh, Brie Larson is the daughter of Kurt Russell's character, so Little Miss Nobody, as they call her, Charlize Theron on his back, uh, Helen Mirren's back, Jason Statham's back, bunch of characters are back, like, there's a lot of the greatest hits playing in this film, and I think it's, I think it's supposed to be that way, because this is one of two of the final chapter, hypothetically three, um, so I could... I can see, I can see why you're throwing every one of these guys in here. Uh, and this, look, this is not a scene of fantastic acting. The acting's fine um, for most of the people and hilarious for one. And I mean that in a good way. But I mean, it's really just a compilation of scenes. Like there's a compilation of acting scenes, which are fine. But you're really, you're here for the stunts, the action, the choreography, the, oh my God, yeah, the ridiculousness, which I will say they toned it back down from going into space, which I very much appreciated. Uh, they, I think the dumbest thing I saw involved something they do in the movie with a crane, which is a little dumb. 
And something they do in the movie with, and you see it in the in the trailer, so I'm not giving it away. John Cena is driving a car that has rockets on it. It's it, it, it's something he, he does with the rock car, which is dumb, but in a cool way, admittedly. <laughs> like, okay, that's kind of stupid, but I really liked it. Uh, should I'll note a couple of the actors that stand. I mean, again, John. Vin Diesel's great. Michelle Rodriguez is great. Like they're all, they're all fine. I, I keep saying great, but they're all, they're all, they're all doing their job. I will admit, Tyrese got a little annoying at points. Like I didn't know why he was be- like they do try to kind of explain it. He they were, they were on a mission. He was the one who was being uh, uh, told to lead the mission, and it didn't, it, it didn't go right. Um, it was a setup, was what it was. Uh, and so he was, and so they kind of give you the impression that he's, uh, with the real, that he was blaming himself the whole time, but they're just jokes that don't work with, uh, Groman in this movie. Uh, he's, he's honestly, he's being kind of an, he's being an asshole for a bit of the movie, uh, for no reason, no reason whatsoever. The point where him and Ludacris get into a fight at one point, like straight up, <laughs> I mean, they reconcile, it's all good family, but it, it's still. Uh, Charlize Theron is back in the movie as well, Cypher. By the way, apparently everyone in this movie knows how to fight, because apparently she knows how to fight. Uh, and whatever, that's fine. I didn't, and she didn't strike me, she was the hacker uh, character, she didn't strike me as a combat specialist, but whatever. Um, so that, that was a, that was a thing, but she, I like her, I, she's got two fights. <laughs> Here's when you know... You're doing something kind of right and kind of wrong. When now Michelle Rodriguez, your main, the main female star of the Fast and Furious films, only gets one fight sequence, and one of, and one of them is with, with Michelle, um, sorry, with Charlize, and Charlize gets two. <laughs> yeah, I think you know you did maybe you did something wrong, but at the same time, I didn't care because Charlize's scenes are pretty badass. I was reminded when she did Aeon Flux or Old Guard. Uh, so, yeah, Brie Larson is, I'll be honest, of the new additions, Brie Larson, I just, she's just there. Like, of everyone in this movie, including people introduced, she's just there. <laughs> like, she's just like, oh, yeah, like, I, oh, are we trying to do a spin-off with this character? Look, I, I, I do not have the hate on for, Char- uh, for a Brie that a lot of other people do, but... That isn't, and hold on, for some reason the, the lighting in this room is kind of going in and out of it. Maybe it's because I'm moving back and forth. I don't have the hate on that a lot of people have for Brie Larson. And I don't even think it's a hate. I think some people are just turned off by her personality sometimes. She does seem a little full of herself from time to time. I'm not going to lie. I have gotten that vibe. Um, particularly those Marvel, you know, Marvel interviews stand out a lot. But I've never hated her as Captain Marvel. I don't like Captain Marvel. Not that I... I don't like Captain Marvel because I don't like Brie Larson. I don't like Captain Marvel because I don't like the way that character is written. Um, that has nothing to do with Brie Larson. So, yeah, but here, I mean, she's, again, she's fine. <laughs> there's, there's, I will say, oh, by the way, another thing of bullshit. Dom does something like the Herculean strength move like he did in the last one where he tears the roof down. <laughs> but he does it with a car. And even I'm watching, and I'm watching, I'm the only other person, there's like two people, me and the other guy in the theater. And I'm watching, it's like, oh, okay, all right, yeah, okay, oh, Jesus Christ. Now, don't get me wrong, on some level, in theory, in theory, I could see it working, hypothetically, with a strong enough guy and the right leverage. Like, theoretically, you would just have to, you'd have to lift, but you also have to push. So there could be a little of that there. Problem is, he's one-arming the damn car. <laughs> So, that's... But regardless, in that scene later on, Brie gets shot, and she's like, ah, it hurts, and like all that. She got shot in the shoulder, and Dom has to carry her, I'm like, she can walk that off, for God's sake. That's not a, that's a... Yes, getting treated, obviously, she in theory could bleed out, but for God's sake, it's a flesh wound. You can walk it off, literally. I... I mm. But you know what? For it, look, it, it's all of this stuff. John Cena's back as well, and I'll say this: John Cena is a lot better in this movie than he is in the other movie. 
But that's because he's playing Peacemaker. He's not playing Dom's brother that he played in the first movie. This super assassin that he's become. No, he's playing Peacemaker. Quirky, funny. He's with the Dom's son a lot of time. So it's John Cena working off a kid. They have a good... John Cena's great with kids. So... And he's got, you know, hey, 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 holy night. The only time to say that is music lyrics and stubbing your toe. And he fires the rock out the door. Holy. Oh, no, no, no. You're, that, that's a good one. Music lyrics, stubbing your toe and rocket cars. <laughs> like, look, John Cena has really become kind of lovable. I really, I didn't love him at first when he came on the scene, but I, I've really come to, around to the liking him as a guy. He's a very lovable guy. Uh, he does have a, he's not quite, he doesn't have a rock level charisma. And definitely not the acting chops that The Rock has at this point. But he's getting there. But uh, the standout for me is Jason Momoa. That is the one I said that is hilarious. And I mean it in the best way possible. He is so over the top. So wacky. And yet so fun to watch. It's like they said, okay, okay. I want you to play the Joker. But play your version of the Joker as a... 10-year-old snotty shit kid who got his crayon stolen on the playground and you have a knife and you're going to shiv the other kid but mock him while you're doing it. That's the kind of character he was told to play and he is chewing the scenery in a way I have never seen Jason Momoa chew the scenery. (laughs) And And because he's got that look to him, he's got that natural kind of like lion glare to him, he does still come off as intimidating in scenes. Um, Definitely. Uh, I'll, I'll say this too. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm not body shaming anyone. He's looking a little puffy. Uh, maybe, and maybe it's just because this is just how he's designed to look. Uh, we never do see him with a shirt off. So maybe, you know, whatever. But look, he, from Aquaman, look, he, he'll work out to get in shape when he needs to. Dad bod. It, look, dad bod Jason Momoa is still in better shape than I am. Um, but beyond that, I mean, uh, look, the dude is... The dude is having so much fun, and he is, oh, excuse me, he is such a delight to watch while he's on screen. He really is. Everyone else, you know, like I said, Han's fine. Dom's sister, I don't remember the actress's name, is fine. And by the way, yes, I would count Michelle Rodriguez over his sister as the main actress of the Fast and Furious movies. Great that she's gone, I think, in the, is it the fifth one? Uh, is it the fifth one? Either way, uh, she's gone in like one of them completely because she's thought to be dead and they bring her back, obviously. But I still count her as the main the main girl uh, or the main woman. Even though Dom's sister technically has more screen time overall in the franchise, I think still count her as the main girl. Um, all of them are fine. They're just not there very much. It was nice to see Paul. It was it was reused footage from the uh, from the fifth movie, but it was nice to see Paul Walker again on the screen. So. Uh, look, is this, oh, and I should say how, not how it ended, but how it ended. Uh, Michelle Rodriguez noted that, uh, when she got done, she's like, did we really just do that? Having watched the film, I, A, think I know what she meant, and B, yeah, I'll admit, I was a little surprised by that. I was a little surprised, like, really? We're going that route? Okay. <laughs> Uh, oh, and yeah, it's been re- the rocks are back in the post credit, the mid credit scene, really. Um, that's not a spoiler. That's been revealed now for a couple, for about a week. So, and look, I love the rock, uh, but I'm like, hey, what? <laughs> no, no, let me rephrase that. I keep forgetting the rock is now in his 50s, and I think he's in his, what, mid 50s now? Hold on. The rock. Dwayne Johnson. Uh, Dwayne Johnson is okay no he's only 51 all right he's only 51 i thought he was maybe older than that man he he is grayed up quite a bit that being said it to work out the way he does uh the rock that, that's a lot of stress to put on the rock admittedly and stress will gray up but uh, like his goatee pretty much all i mean it's not pure white but it's very silver foxish uh and i'm like wow oh okay um I wasn't expecting that. I, I know hair dye is a thing. We didn't, didn't want to go that route. Right. <laughs> Not judging, just noticing. Anyway, no, that, but that's that's all I can really say about it. Look, it's not perfect by any stretch of the means. But is it fun? It was a ball, honestly. Hypothetically, if my girlfriend, who was initially going to watch it with me, but 
uh, opted out. Just tired. That's fine. I wasn't expecting you to join me. Wanted to see it. Date night, honey. It's on me. Uh, we're going to go see Little Mermaid next week. She was a little um, dubious of not seeing it, but then I said, I was like, look, I'll buy. It's like, okay. <laughs> I'm going to go see Little Mermaid. Um, uh, so, yeah. Uh, you know what? I'm, the longer I have sat on Little Mermaid and seen things and heard them, some of the music, the more I'm actually very, I'm looking forward to Little Mermaid. I was having a very lukewarm reaction to it. Trailers did look amazing. Uh, but I've been warming up to, you know, the, uh, some of the casting choices. Melissa McCarthy, admittedly, I was also like, what? But, you know, I've warmed up to that. Apparently, The Poor Unfortunate Souls was a big hit at CinemaCon. Uh, I never had a ha problem with Haley Bailey uh, in the role at all. People are getting racist about that or just idiots and bigots. And you don't deserve good things. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, and to that one person who made the, like, the video is like, why biologically she should be a, white, a pale white girl. I'm sorry. I could actually counteract that argument by saying, have you seen anglerfish? Have you seen a lot of deep sea creatures? Guess what? A lot of them are actually pitch black in color to absorb light. So guess what? That argument actually doesn't hold, pun intended, water. Anyway, so, <laughs> I don't know. It just, it drives me nuts about some of these things. So the way some of these people act sometimes. Anyway, I digress. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. What did you think of the movie if you've seen it? Uh, are you going to see it based on my recommendation? Let me know. But until then, thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.